Welcome to Learn from the Pros, a special segment of the London Chess Classic broadcast where you can study some of the best games of the participants. In this video, we are going to see a fine victory by England's number one, Mickey Adams. Adams is playing with the white pieces against Vladimir Kramnik. This is a game from 2004 from the Vikanze tournament. You can see that black is a pawn up currently, but white's pieces are much more active. Let's just compare white's rooks to black's rooks. White's rooks are on the open files, very well placed. Also, his queen is much more active than the black queen. The bishop on d4 is attacking on both flanks. And well, the c3 knight is just normal, but it's not a bad piece. Simply, the only piece uh, from black's camp that I like is the d3 knight. It's a really active piece. The only problem with this knight is that it's supported by the e4 pawn and if this pawn falls then the knight will be in trouble. So uh, black will have to try to keep this pawn up, if not his position will collapse and this is what we're gonna see soon. It is of course wise turn to play because the d4 bishop is hanging, you should do something about that bishop and Adams played a really curious move. It's a nice move and a good move, bishop a7, but it's usually a square where you don't put a bishop in the middle game. So bishop a7, the idea is very simple. You have to do something about this rook and if you play rook a8, then of course queen takes b7 is not a good move because rook e7 will win the bishop on a7, don't blunder your bishop. But the idea is that here white can capture the c4 pawn. This is what I told you that in some positions the d3 knight can be in trouble after knight takes e4, so if rook takes e4, then rook takes d3 works because the back rank is weak. So black cannot capture this rook since he would get mated after this beautiful queen sacrifice, queen f8, rook takes f8 and rook takes f8 mate. If you want, I can also put it on the board. Let's just see this final position. This would be a really nice back rank mate. So after rook takes e4, rook takes d3, really nice move. If black plays queen e8, then white can just go rook d f3 and once again threaten back rank mate. So now we've tripled our forces on the f5 and queen f8 is threatening mate again. So the bishop can be captured and queen f8 is coming anyway. Uh, if black plays g6, then white can just capture this pawn on b7. And if instead he exchanges the queens after rook takes f7, we are still threatening mate on the back rank. Black has to do something about that. And after rook takes b7, this is just a pawn up for white and very active pieces, so this endgame is winning. Therefore, after bishop a7, black cannot go rook a8. He has to make an intermediate move and attack the queen before he moves the rook from b8. So there are two options to attack the queen. He can go either rook e7, which was played in the game, or he can go rook f8. One of these moves are good, one of these moves is a good move, and the other one is bad. Uh, Kramnik chose the bad one because rook e7 seemed to be actually the good choice. You attack the queen and you keep on protecting the pawn. But there will be a problem with this move. Let's see what would have happened after rook f8. If rook f8, queen e6, then the idea behind all this is that here there's e3. So you don't move the rook, but you play e3 to threaten winning an exchange as well. So even though the rook is hanging on b8, after bishop takes b8, knight f2 check, a fork, so this rook will be captured and this position, for instance, takes, takes, knight takes d1, we will just exchange everything. This would have been an equal position. Also, if after rook f8, white tries, for instance, queen takes f8, queen f8, rook takes, rook takes, then after knight e4, once again, white pieces are better, but there's this a bit annoying move, knight b2, White cannot leave the back rank, he has to keep on protecting the f1 square, so after knight b2, for instance, he should play rook b1, the knight goes back, and this position is still slightly better for white, but it's not a big deal. So rook f8 was the correct move, but after rook e7, which seems to be an okay move, you attack the queen, 
you still protect your pawn, then you will move your rook, what could go wrong? Well, the problem is that after queen f5, rook a8, knight takes e4, just simply captures the pawn and uh, this bishop is not hanging because once again there's this back rank mate. So the problem with this was that now the material is equal, you cannot capture the bishop, uh, you should do something about your back rank and this knight will be hanging too since there's no supporting pawn on e4 anymore. There's a pin on the d-file, the back rank is weak, equal material and white pieces are much better. So this position is actually winning for white. Uh, black has to go rook d7 so that now at least the knight is supported but after bishop b6, a really pretty move, once again the bishop cannot be captured because of this mate on f8, queen f8, you sacrifice the queen but it's back rank mate again. So queen e8 has to be played and now a5 is the kind of move I always like to see. You fix the structure on the queen side, you support the bishop, these pawns cannot move uh, and white pieces are just simply much more active. The knight on e4 is brilliant, also the queen, the rooks, the bishop, all the white pieces are very active, while black is struggling with uh, his awkwardly placed pieces like the rook on a8, the bishop on a6, this knight on d3 that has to be supported, that has to be protected because it can be uh, it can be lost and also the queen on e8 is weird so this position is just very bad for black let's see how the game finished Kramnik went king g8 so that he would not get mated on f8 and after queen g4 well now unfortunately there's a very big threat knight f6 fork triple fork actually it would win the queen so he had to go back to a8 and now simply Rook f8, well simply, it's not a simple move, but it does simplify the position after rook f8, queen takes f8, queen takes d7, uh, Adams will just cash in. Now the knight is hanging, the pawn on b7 is hanging, so after knight e5, queen takes b7, it's already a pawn up for white and very active pieces, so the game soon finished, let me just show you the last moves, knight d6, before he will just simply create a passport on the queen side soon and this very moment where even the black king can be in trouble also you see here in the final position that white pieces have been much more active than black pieces for the whole time from the middle game position we saw white was dominating because of his very active pieces, even though he had a pawn down from the in, in the initial position, uh, his pieces were always much better. And if you just check out this final position where Kramnik resigned, you can see that white pieces are so well placed, they are all, they are all centralized. Now he's threatening rook takes e5, the knight cannot move because then there's rook takes h5 check, also you can't move the queen away from the 8th rank because then there will be a problem with this rook as well. It was a really nice victory. Uh, I love that Adams was just improving his pieces all the time. I hope you learned a lot from this game and uh, please let us know in the tweets if you know any other Adams games, which games by Adams you like the most. See you soon.